In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my 2024 housing market predictions. So if you clicked on this video, you're probably asking yourself, what the hell's going on with the housing market? Is it a good time to buy? Is it too late to be selling? If I bought in the last two to three years, am I going to be upside down for the next five to seven years while the economy and the housing market recovers? Are we facing another global financial crisis like we saw in 2008? And your last question is probably, what are interest rates doing? I'm going to be answering all of those questions and more in this video. So buckle up and stick around with me to the end because I will save my silver lining advice for how you can navigate this market successfully and use it to your advantage. So in this video, we're going to be discussing affordability, ghost inventory, not shadow inventory. This is something totally different the Airbnb bust that's currently happening, interest rates, and my perception on the impending recession. Here's what we do know. Home prices, interest rates, and inventory levels are all going to dictate housing affordability in the coming years. Housing markets don't just crash overnight, they grind themselves down slowly over time. And what people fail to realize is that there is a normal economic cycle. It's a boom and a bust cycle. And that normal cycle plays out over and over again. Real estate markets traditionally move in seven to 10 year cycles. So if you think about it, 2008 was when the market started to take an ugly downturn. That took us all the way to 2015, which was a seven year cycle. And then in 2015, we started to climb ourselves out of the housing dark ages, so to speak. And so from 2015, all the way up until 2023, where we are at today, we've been in a pretty good growth cycle. Now, arguably at the end of 2022, prices did come down because interest rates started to climb, but prices have pretty much stabilized. And if anything, maybe had a slight bump this year in 2023. Now, why is that when interest rates are at a 22 year high? My theory is that we have had low inventory in the resale market, just in the resale market, not the new construction market. And we're going to dive deeper into why there's a difference right now between the resale market and the new construction market. In the coming years, housing prices, interest rates, and inventory levels are all going to work together synerg synergistically to dictate where the market is going to be headed. So reducing inflation will come at the expense of the economy and the normal cycle will play out. The real estate industry at large is rather sleepy. Reporting is delayed 30 to 60 days. And everyone is so focused on the Fed's narrative that they fail to use critical thinking skills and peel their eyes away from the propaganda. And that narrative likes to downplay the severity of the issues bubbling underneath the surface because they're too scared to scare off shareholders and investors. And they're trying to protect their bottom line. We have two major issues on our hands right now an affordability crisis and a credit crisis. And on top of that, you've got commercial, the commercial real estate industry is under fire right now because they've got tons of office buildings where notes are about to come due on and you've got vacancies out the wazoo. So we're going to start seeing multiple credit events in the economy that are gonna start falling down around us like a house of cards. And when we look at things in aggregate, it gets difficult to pin the tail on the donkey and say, ah, this is the problem here, or no, this is not the problem here. You have to use your critical thinking skills and look at this as a multifactorial situation. Okay, so let's look at the inflation-adjusted S&P Case-Shiller 20-City Composite Home Price Index, which is a monthly index that tracks changes in the price of residential real estate in 20 major metropolitan regions in the US. This graph is inflation adjusted, meaning that they remove the effect of inflation from the data. For example, let's just say that a stock rises about 23% in a given year, that inflation is running at 3%. So we can conclude more or less that the actual appreciation is about 20%. So I just wanted to explain that before we move into actually interpreting the data that we're looking at here. And you'll see from this graph that we are not on a good path right now. My biggest prediction right now is that a lot of real estate markets in our economy are going to be resetting somewhere around 
2019's values. The reason why I say this is because everything that we gained between 2015 and 2019, that was all stable growth. So the foundation is solid. The last two years though, we had meteoric growth and a lot of that was unstable and imbalanced growth. For instance, for the first time ever in our, in, in, in the real estate industry's history, we lobbied for unemployment benefits and we actually got unemployment benefits because everybody in the real estate industry thought the market was going to crash in 2020 and it did the exact opposite. The growth that we had was antithetical to what everybody thought was coming in the economy. So with it being unstable growth, there's a valid argument for why if the market's going to reset, it's resetting to 2019. Topic number one, affordability. We don't have enough Americans that can actually afford housing right now. Only 23% of homes listed on the market in the US right now are affordable to the average income earner. Those numbers in a more balanced market are about 50% of homes. We haven't seen numbers like that since 2006. Furthermore, credit card debt is the highest it has ever been. As of Q2 of 2023, the US credit card debt has surpassed 1.03% trillion dollars. So what this graph is showing you right now is that people are overextended more so than we ever have been in the past. And this amassing credit card debt is preventing approximately 20% of Americans from being able to even qualify for a loan. The reason being is because they have to be concerned with their DTI, their debt to income ratio. And from experience as boots on the ground in one of the U.S.'s hottest residential markets, Boise, Idaho, I'm telling you that in real time right now, I have buyers on the front lines bowing out left and right and sitting by idly waiting for conditions in the market to improve before they move forward on a purchase. We're having an affordability crisis between the credit card debt, between housing prices, between interest rates. We have an affordability issue. So prices, in my opinion, have to come down and they're going to be responding viscerally here in the next 18 to 24 months due to topic number two, ghost inventory. Now, this is not shadow inventory like what you're accustomed to hearing back when they were analyzing what happened in the 2008 GFC. Ghost inventory right now is the massive amount of surplus inventory that builders accrued over the last three years. And we are about to start seeing that spec inventory flooding the market. Builders have created a massive surplus of spec home inventory. And that's the ghost inventory that I'm talking about right now. And these builders didn't create $300,000 to $400,000 homes. They're creating $500,000 plus homes, which is only further compounding the affordability crisis that we're having in this country right now. And frankly, I think builders are worried right now because while the cost of labor and material skyrocketed over the last three years, that increased their cost to build these spec homes. But now they've got to release all of these homes on the market, and that's only going to drive prices down because interest interest rates are so high right now. So frankly, I'd be worried about their P&Ls in the next 18 to 24 months because they're having to sell these high cost build jobs at a decreased price, diminishing their profit margins, or even possibly letting these units go at a loss. And this ghost inventory is not something that you're going to be reading about in the surveys or in the data or in the reports. These are developments on the ground in real time from Boise to Austin to Vegas to Nashville. Bottom line is the U.S. market is about to be saturated with expensive spec home new build inventory. So the bottleneck in inventory that we have seen in 2023, that's not going to be the case moving into 2024. We're going to be seeing a ton of homes come on the market. They're going to be new construction homes, not necessarily resale homes, because again, those sellers that locked in low interest rates, they're not going to be swapping out their 2.85 or their 3.25 for a 7% mortgage rate anytime soon. And we're kind of seeing the same trend right now in multifamily. We're seeing a lot of luxury homes, class A properties that were built over the last three years, and they are sitting vacant right now in multiple markets across the country. So basically what I'm saying in layman's terms is we've got a lot of unaffordable inventory right now waiting to release itself into the market. And let me explain right now why there's a disconnect between the data and reality. A lot of these builders don't consider a home complete until there has been a certificate of occupancy that's been released, and that typically doesn't happen until the home has actually been purchased. 
people, a lot of these builders buy the plots of land, they go to subdivide them, and they are paying taxes on just the bare dirt. They don't want to be paying taxes on all of this real estate and the bare dirt. So they're holding on to these homes right now, and they're not getting certificate of occupancies issued to them. And then they're going to be selling this inventory. So they're not reporting that the inventory exists. One, because there's a tax benefit not to do it. But two, they're waiting to release these homes on the market, probably hoping for the market to improve so that they can get a higher price for these properties, considering that they paid a premium to build them as the cost of labor and materials was way higher when they were building this inventory. So all of this ghost inventory that I'm talking to you about is not being accounted for in the surveys and in the data. So the fact that all of this spec home inventory exists, but they are not being listed on the MLS right now, the MLS is across the country, it's skewing the data. So this is essentially what I call ghost inventory. When it comes on the market, it's going to be driving prices down because now we're no longer going to have low inventory propping pricing up. So in a climate with a lot of inventory and high interest rates, prices are going to be barreling down in the housing market. And frankly, in my opinion, I think we're going to be seeing the release of this inventory all at once. And the reason being is because corporate holders are going to be responding to economic shifts that impact them all at the same time. Everything we think we know about consumer behavior is currently being thrown out the window. We do have low inventory right now. And frankly, that's the only reason, in my opinion, prices have actually sustained themselves this year in spite of climbing interest rates. So for the first time in history, we are seeing the cost of a brand new build cheaper than a resale home. And we've never seen that before in the real estate market. And these builders, in order to move this inventory, are offering massive incentives. They're offering rate buy downs, promos, price discounts. They're throwing in appliances. They're paying for landscaping. So they're doing everything that they can to close the deal with these buyers. Just to give you an example, I had a buyer in summer of 2022 that was buying a new construction home in Eagle, Idaho. And this buyer, the builder literally offered a $35,000 incentive to buy his rate from the high sixes all the way down to the high fours. So two points off on his loan and that sealed the deal. Topic number three, the Airbnb gold rush or better known as the Airbnb bus. Airbnbs have become a problem. Occupancy rates are at an all-time low and people's equity is dropping. These are the people that went out and bought seven to 10 properties because they secured interest-only loans. Now, when the note comes due, they start to panic because they thought they were gonna be able to refinance, but they're not, and so now liquidity is drying up. But the reality is they're not making any money, and they're certainly not making the money that they projected them to be making in the first place. So you've got these small investors that are carrying all of this debt now, the debt that they can't even sell because they're upside down on it, and they're not cash flowing as strong as they they thought they were going to be cash flowing. And this is where increased costs start to sneak up on rookie investors. Due to all of the COVID programs that were launched, we're not going to be seeing reporting on seriously delinquent loans for quite some time now. This process became overly regulated after the GFC. So frankly, there's a lot more red tape in order to call these notes due. So this data is being masked right now. Topic number four, interest rates. This is the most speculative out of everything that we're going to be talking about. We know that these short-term rentals are falling apart. And we also now know from reports on the ground that we are about to have a surplus of spec home inventory. But interest rates, that's a lot more speculative. As of late August, the average 30-year mortgage hit a high of 7.36%, higher than it's been in more than 20 years. That's why I said at the beginning of this video, we've hit a 22-year high for mortgage interest rates. My prediction is interest rates are going to tick up to the 8 percentile, and then that's going to be when we finally set fire to the affordability crisis. Another wild card is it's an election year, and we all know the great lengths that the current administration will go to control the economy and the country, so I'm just going to let you draw your own conclusions on that one. But traditionally, we will see interest rates ease off right before an election. Question's going to be, in light of prices still being high and where they're at right now, and with only 23% of Americans being able to afford the inventory on the market, is it in America's best interest to plummet interest rates right now, only worsening pricing problems? What we need is for pricing to come down and then interest rates to slowly and deliberately ease off over time. Topic number five, the impending economic recession. Unemployment rates have already been going up. We've seen layoffs across multiple sectors already start to happen. So a recession 
concurrent job loss, affordability crises, massive credit card debt, all of this is going to be the gasoline that starts the dumpster fire. So this recession is going to accelerate the housing market crash by creating a lack of liquidity, which is going to stimulate a lot of adverse credit events. So to recap, if you think about this in terms of affordability, right? Inventory, interest rates, the fact that we've got delinquencies due to the Airbnb bust that are going to be coming up. We had a lot of investors that bought a lot of properties with bad assumptions on the income that those properties were going to be able to produce. All of these things are going to be bubbling underneath the surface, working towards the inevitable housing market crash, where we're going to see prices, in my prediction, reset all the way back to 2019. Why? Because 15 to 19 was stable growth. So the good news is, is that opportunity abounds in down market. You can actually afford things. So the people that have the capital to go out and buy things will be able to get great pricing. So never forget that when the markets are down and people are operating in fear, that's an opportunity and a window for you to come in and get a great deal on things that you want to purchase. So that when the market goes back up, because it always does, then your equity that you stand to gain becomes significant at that point. So I hope this video was insightful. Um, it was just my two cents. Disclaimer is that I am not Nostradamus. I do not have a crystal ball. I cannot predict the future, but these are some of the things that I have been seeing as a real estate professional in the market that I think dictates the next housing market crash. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully you learned something. Would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Once again, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with all things real estate related. And thank you so much for watching my video.